without further ado, I would like to introduce Karen Aston, the UT women's basketball coach. Gosh, this is a, this is a privilege. Uh, I, I did not know much about this organization, but before the day is over, the night is over, I need to get somebody to get me involved in it and uh, sign up for this because it, it, first of all, you get a drink ticket when you walk in. <laughs> it's the first time I've been anywhere to speak where you get a drink ticket, so it's a good thing I didn't use it before I got started, but uh, it, it's a thrill to be here, and I know, I know that you guys have tons of opportunities to listen to people speak, and you have... Um, tons of other things you could probably be doing right now so I feel like it's a privilege to have you here and uh, for me to be here to be able to give you uh, just a few words of wisdom I, I know I'm on a short time frame here so uh, I could talk all day long honestly about my experiences and what I think has something to do with why I've been successful uh, but so I'm going to give you just a little bit of background first of all I am a country small town girl that was able to uh, through a whole lot of uh, guidance from really really good people terrific mentorship and some kind of god-given work ethic um, i was able to go through the ranks of, of coaching in a really unique way uh, i started in arkansas don't hold it against me but i am from arkansas uh, i started believe it or not as a high school coach and i'm talking ground level up uh, my first job was 7 through 12, 7 days a week, cross country in the fall, basketball in the, in the winter, and track in the spring. And then in the summer you open the gym up every day because that's just what you did in Arkansas, there's nothing else to do. So you just open the gym up every day and everybody came. So for about my first 7 years of my career, um, I, just, I just played basketball and taught kids. Um, and I really do feel like that instilled an, an amazing amount of work ethic because I had to really dig in. I mean, it wasn't, you know, a lot of nowadays, and I think you guys can relate to this as business women, you know, you see peers that all of a sudden from, they go from college and they're in the top of the world. And um, I feel privileged, to be honest with you, that I took a different route because I see some of the, some of the people that are in my profession and my peers that go straight from playing college basketball and now all of a sudden they're an assistant coach in college and I'm like wow uh, you know they I don't I think you missed something by not paying your dues I really do and I think it's given me an appreciation for the people that I have to deal with on a daily basis which are kids and the second people I have to deal with on a daily basis are coaches uh, because the name of the game for us is recruiting so every day I have to deal with people that did the same thing that I did for seven years, which is coach high school basketball. So it gave me an opportunity, I think, to really appreciate sweeping floors and driving buses. Uh, the first job that I had, again, it was I got right out of college, they gave me a head job, gave me the keys to the bus, said we're gonna go to the parking lot out here in the football stadium, you're gonna get your license. That is the, <laughs> the honest to God's truth. I got my bus driving license. Like, I'm talking about the really big bus. <laughs> the yellow bus. I drove a yellow bus at 23 years old. Scary. Scary. I didn't drive it very long because after I hit a few curves inside the building, they, they said, wait a minute, we need to get somebody else to drive for you. But I did that. Seriously. I mean, I, I the first game, we went, I, are any of you from Arkansas? Yes. Anybody know? Any, you are? Where? Jacksonville. Oh, my goodness. So you know what the Buffalo River is. Oh, it's Okay, so there's a bridge that's about this long, and my first trip, I go up to Harrison, Arkansas with the big yellow bus, and I go across the bridge, and here comes an 18-wheeler on the same bridge. So I basically just closed my eyes, and I heard this loud pop, and we had hit, when we had hit mirrors, and uh, at that point, I was done. I went home and asked if I could do something else, any other thing. And uh, they agreed. They, they agreed that I did not need to be doing that. So I got out of bus driving. But uh, I, I tell you what, I, I've been really blessed. I have great parents that taught me. And I know you guys are mothers, and um, you know you understand this. But I had parents that taught me work ethic, and I think it has instilled in me the will to be successful. I, I think there's something said for having to take out the trash and having chores and having responsibility as a young person. And I, I really do think that 
Um, that and just, again, great mentors. I had a great high school coach. And, um, you know, so the thing that, that I think I learned along the way was there's just some certain things that you have to have to be successful. And the only way I figured this out, obviously it's not because I'm really very smart. It's because I had an opportunity to be under great, great people. I think my high school coach was way ahead of the game. Uh, I won a state championship as a, as a player. And the things that he taught me were the same things my parents taught me. And then I go work under three or four Hall of Famers. I mean, I, I am a blessed coach right now because I worked for a lady named Sanja Hogue. Do any of you follow basketball? Follow it for a really long time. Do you know who Sanja Hogue is? You remember Louisiana Tech? You're too young. See, I'm showing my age right here. <laughs> Louisiana Tech and Texas used to be the teams in women's basketball. It's kind of like if you had to think of who the team is right now in women's basketball, who is it? Anybody know? I got a t-shirt over here if you know who won the national championship this year. In women's basketball. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you know. Go ahead. UConn. You got it. Good job. Good job. Uh, so back in the day, UConn, I mean, uh, Tennessee, uh, Texas, and Louisiana Tech were the two programs that everybody wanted to be like. And the two women that coached those programs was a lady named Sanja Hope that was at Louisiana Tech, and Jody Conrad, who everybody knows who Jody is, was the coach here at Texas. And those were the premier programs. And everybody wanted to be like them. Well, I was fortunate enough that my first college job was under Sanja at Baylor. And then I took a quick route and um, through some work ethic and along the way figured out how to get to the next stop, which was North Texas. And then I was blessed to be here for eight years under Jody Conrad. So um, you don't really have a choice. When you work for people that are in Hall of Fames now, then they had a, a footprint for success. Uh, so I, I feel like what I've, I've been able to do along the years is just try to figure out what it is these people do that, are, that make them successful. And I came up with a, a little bit of a, a philosophy about the four C's. And it's just, I mean, to me it's about being successful at anything. There are, all, there are four things that if you're a mother, a teacher, or a businesswoman, where, whatever they are, I think these things are important. And I'm going to start with consistency because I really do believe it is the most important thing. And these other things, I mean, you can make a million descriptions of people that are successful, but I feel like putting that at the top of the list is the most important thing because what I've found, in, especially in my profession, is that, you know, you kind of watch, how many of you are bosses, straight up bosses? A lot of you, a lot of you. You have people, obviously, that, you, that work under you and that you're in charge of. And what I have found as a boss, that um, I realized as a boss that I was like this as a, as a player and I was like this as an assistant coach. But what I realize now as a boss, and I can say this about my players, and I can say this about the staff that works for me, consistency is what I appreciate the most. Because I, I'll give you players as an example, because I, I coach. And the players that I appreciate the most and that it's like every day when I walk on the, on the court, if they're not there, I get anxious and I get uncomfortable because I have to be successful. I will be successful if they do their jobs along with me. So the players that I appreciate the most and, and the coworkers that I appreciate the most are the ones that it's really simple to say, but it's really hard to do. They do their job every day. They do their job. They don't try to do anybody else's. You know, if I've got a post player, y'all know what post players are? Everybody knows what guards are, right? They get to shoot. Post players are dirty work players, I think. So I'll use them as an example. If I have a post player that every rebound is hers, and every time down the floor she gets down the floor and does her job, then we're going to be successful. And if I have a player that every single day in practice, she just does her job to the best of her abilities and never takes days off. I, I use this as an example. Usually as a woman, there's about one or two days that you're just going to, a young woman, that they're going to cry or you know, you know what I'm talking about. 
And I've learned that, that you need to leave them alone those days. You don't argue with them and just leave them alone because there's a reason why they're having a tantrum that day. But most often they, they bring their lunch pail and go to work. And those are the people that I appreciate the most. Uh, the ones that are the most difficult to mentor and the most difficult to count on are the ones that a lot of the fans love because they do a lot of, a lot of great things but they also don't show up sometimes. So as a coach and as the boss, that's, those people make me uncomfortable because I, I don't ever know whether they're gonna be dependable or not. So consistency in your work ethic, I think, I honestly think is the most important thing of all. Um, the second C uh, I think is important, especially in my profession, but I would also say that, again, if you're a boss, it's a little bit underrated and I'm, I'm kind of a um, no-nonsense kind of person, and I've had to learn along the way that this is that's why I put it second, because it really is probably besides the fact that you show up and work every day, I think if you're a boss and you're in charge of people, then it is extremely important, which is caring. Um, I used to not, I think I, I cared, naturally and young people can really really care you know know when you care I'm talking about the little seventh graders that don't mind every day coming and hugging your neck you know when they're little you can really tell you've made a difference and they can really tell when you care and as people get older I think you have to make a bigger effort to let them know that you care um, it, people's guards are up those types of things that are not there as with young people so I think it's really important that whoever works for you knows that you care about them. And um, I, I use this saying all the time, they don't, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I, I think that's really important. Um, our, my profession is critical because they are young people and we're dealing with an, a, a group of people that are trying to have one common cause and one common goal. And I think if they all care about each other, that's really critical and that they care about you and they know that you care about them they're going to perform a little bit better so but i do think that it's i mean basically everybody wants to know that you care about them right so i i, I think that's i've raised that up in the seas i don't know that i had it there um, a while back but i begin to understand especially with young people they they really need to know that um, the third one i i think it's um, you know i think commitment Sounds easy, again, it kind of goes along with going, showing up every day, but uh, I think that it, it's, a, it's a pretty big work. Um, and again, as it, you know, it can relate to being a wife, it can relate to being a mother, it can relate to being a business person. I think you have to be committed. And it does go along with showing up every day. Um, the commitment goes a long way with our team. You know, and with my profession, because the first thing that happens when a player decides to be a Texas Longhorn is they have to commit and you know it's interesting when I talk to the young people because that's it's, it's the way the business works is they verbally commit and then they sign on the dotted line <laughs> kind of like you do when you say I do I can I compare it to dating all the time because at some point they have to say I do and you have to offer them which is basically your it's like I mean it's crazy but it's like that and then they actually have to sign on. They have to sign a piece of paper and it has to become official and all of that. It becomes a relationship is what it does. It becomes a relationship. And I, I think that the big thing that I try to get across to the young people is that, and this is hard nowadays. I don't know if it's hard for y'all as business people, but people bail on the commitments pretty quick. Um, in our profession, they transfer. And if things are not going just exactly like, especially a freshman, you know, I've always, uh, you try to tell them, I mean, how many of y'all were, you were all freshmen at some, wasn't it miserable? I mean, seriously, it was miserable. For our players, it's miserable. They're like, what am I doing? Why am I here? Where is my mom? I mean, it's just, every, everything is so new to them, the environment. Texas is overwhelming, uh, how it's difficult, and there's lots of pressure, and then mommy and daddy aren't there, and the umbrella's not over them, and... Um, it's just uncomfortable for them and they never can get their feet on the ground it's amazing we just got through with finals and to see the looks on their faces the freshmen because they took their last final and they're no longer a freshman anymore 
and they can't wait to come back so they can watch the watch the new watch the new ones feel like idiots. Uh, but commitment is huge. I mean, it's amazing to me how fast they want to bail. It's amazing. I mean, it is a process to be successful on any level, and um, they get there and they just immediately, when things start getting hard, they think that it's going to be easier at, at another spot or at another place, and it's not. So I think to be able to convince someone. And I know you have, I mean, it's the same way in business. The first couple of years, you don't, I mean, you don't know what you're doing. And to be able to convince people to stay committed and stay on the course ahead is really critical, I think, for a boss. Uh, and then the last one is communication. And it's probably the biggest missing piece uh, in being successful because when, especially, I, I'm talking to, to everyone, but I mean, the bosses, it's sometimes you just want people to understand what you're thinking without talking to them. Am I right about that? Yeah. You're all laughing at me. <laughs> it's the truth. I mean, sometimes you just want, you want it to all, but it's not. And it's, it's hard to do sometimes because you want to go to the next thing and you want to go to your job, but your job is to communicate with everybody else. And it's incredibly critical on a team. Because, I mean, I can, I can get this down to the, the science of playing basketball. I mean, it you know, you can't get to point A to point B in a sport, a team sport, without communication. You know, if you've got, you all know what an on-ball pick is? Anybody know what an on-ball, a screen is? There you go, I see it. You set a screen and your teammate doesn't call the screen, then you're probably going to have a concussion. Yes. You know, you're going to get, you know, it, it's, it's just so many things that go into every time you go down the floor, all five people that are on the court have to be talking and moving as one unit. And communication is just key. For the players and then it's relayed from the coaching staff to the players um, amazing how confused people get about their roles if you don't define them and if you don't talk to them constantly and communicate and it's hard it's a hard thing because you just want them to know you want them to figure it out on their own and most of the time they can and I've experienced so many times where it just if I just sit down five minutes with somebody and every you know there's frustration on either my part or somebody else, either on my staff or my players, and then and then we'll talk for five or ten minutes and they'll you can see the look on their face. It's like, oh she really does either know what she's talking about or she does care. You know, and it, it's incredible what just a little bit of communication will do for people. So um, those are my four C's, and, and I, I really have developed those in that philosophy just from watching the people that are successful. I think um, anytime you're in a business, uh, if the biggest suggestion, I mean, I have mentors that I still talk to all of the time. I go to clinics, I go to conventions, which is obviously what you guys are doing here. You're networking with people that are in the same business that you are, and I think it's the best way to learn. Uh, I, I, my, my high school coach used to t tell me if you're through learning, then you might as well be dead. And I still remember that a long, it was a long time. It's been a long time. Uh, but I remember that. I remember him telling me that if you were ever going to be through growing, you were done. 